Well, good evening. Good evening, Living Word Family Church. Good to have you here on a Sunday night. Wish there were a few more of you here, but that's, ain't, that's not your fault. That's not our fault. We're here, right? I guess people got offended this morning and wanted to stay away. And No, praise the Lord. God's got something good for us, right? Uh, I know, I'm gonna, is there anybody worshiping here with us for the first time? I see a couple visitors, but they're familiar faces. Good to have you here. Good to have you here. Always good to see you. Anybody here for the first time, though? Nope. All right, we're all veterans, and most of you are probably here because you've heard uh, Brother David Husky before. What a great word he brought this morning and, and uh, uh, tickled our ears. I shouldn't say that. That's not a good thing. He tempted us. No, that's not a good thing either. He enticed us to come back tonight to hear some, uh, some, other, some specific things. Yeah, entice is probably not much better. Anyway. Uh, I, I, I came expecting, I know you came expecting tonight, what, it's a great word, it's a word that uh, we found out on the way in tonight, if, if uh, our source was correct, the last time he ministered on this subject was 2007, uh, so that's been quite some time, been considerably over 10 years, and uh, absolutely a timely word for, uh, I'm not saying us as a congregation specifically, but us as a congregation living in a society that loves to carry and dwell on and identify with offense and that's not what we're called to do or who we're called to be and I certainly can't say it better than our guest minister tonight so would you please give a warm living word welcome to David Husky. Yeah, Pastor. All right well if it wasn't for Jesus we'd be in a big mess right? Thank God for Christ. Thank God. Thank God. You know, how many how many ever once so I go over your born again experience. Mine was fantastic. You know, I just, it was a really, a really major change. And, and it was mostly when actually that I made, you know, making Jesus Lord will really transform your life. Being Savior is one thing, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to hell, I'm going to make it to heaven. But when you make him Lord, that Father, why am I here? What's my purpose for being here? Uh, I'm on this planet to fill your will and your purpose. And boy, you, cook, you, you hook into that one, and, and there comes major change, major transformation in the new creation. So I don't want to take away from that, but it even goes further when you move him from Savior to Lord. And, uh, you know, and there, there's some thoughts about that, but different thoughts, and I'm, I'm not going to go that far. We're we in the theological stuff, and we don't need to go there. We're here to learn about events. And uh, you made it back. I was praying going, oh, Father God, please have somebody come back. Please have somebody come back, you know, with, with all that was shared and stuff. And no, you did really good. And we're going to go somewhere tonight. And I want to share a few things first. Uh, if you remember, the Lord was sharing that there's someone, uh, you know, from here back down the back that needs to receive healing. Now, Nancy, and where are you at, Nancy? Where is she? Okay. And, and, and. We still don't have this part here, but Nancy was sharing that uh, she had horrific pain for about pain, but especially this last week, right? Very bad. It was, you know, when she'd move in the bed, it would hurt, be painful. And uh, in the line, when she was releasing, letting things go, she could sense this, this power was upon her. And, uh, and her words to me was, is that I've been healed, I'm pain free. And so praise God for that. Now, she did say, though, and, and I said, look, if it tries to come back, and she goes, oh, it's already tried. But she just like, and that's what you do. Immediately, I bind this, I don't accept this in Jesus' name, and it'll stay away. When we, when we have that kind of understanding, because the enemy tries to come and steal the word. And so he tries to steal that, and so I, you're good for you that, no, I don't accept that. I received my healing, and you did. And thank God for you to maintain that. So pain-free, isn't that a wonderful? And no one laid hands, and there's nothing wrong laying hands on people. I, I, I do that, but I like it when God just kind of does it on his own. You get to watch him do it. I kind of like that. Now, is there anyone else here that maybe you came up on like, hey, I this back, had back issue or this head issue, head or back issue, whatever, and I received healing? Was there anyone else that that happened to? Because we definitely want to hear your, your testimony if it did. Okay. Well, all right, good enough, and, uh, and I, I'm going gonna, 
I'm going to share a story here that I shared with Pastor in a minute that dealt with a really re remarkable healing when I pastored. And uh, let's review a few, few things first. Now, let me give you a few things away. Once again, remember the book, Overcoming All Fences. Quite a few got this. It's a $3 investment. Uh, Overcoming All Fences, God's Provision for Victory, Long and Longer, a Prisoner of Hurt. Ninth, Tenth Printing. It's just, it's been all over everywhere. And not only because of God, this cause the Lord. I was going to write a normal book and I was driving in my Honda Accord, which is biblical. They're all in one Accord. <laughs> when I first began to travel in ministry. And uh, the Lord just said, just, just do a mini book. So you just go, yes, sir. And we changed everything. And spent, I said, Lord, what's the most important part about this book? And he related the application. So a lot of time and thought and prayers put into the application part. So the, it will work. This, you can save yourself about $100 an hour with a psychologist, and you could read this little book. That went over super well, too. All right, praise God. And there's nothing wrong because there's, there's good Christian psychologists. Nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, we all need help one time or another. So anyway, this is available for you. And who did not get this, but you'd like to have it because I'd like to give it to you? Anyone? Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. And uh, here you go, young man. I'm going to throw this pass. Oh, you want me to throw the pass to you? Or, oh, he wants it. Oh, interception. Almost. Okay. Yeah, he, yes, he did. And then we have what's called the armor of God. Now, I like to give stuff away, but I can't only brought a few. The armor of God. You know, the Bible read that in Ephesians 6, put on the whole armor of God. I taught this in Bible school when I was in Pensacola, Florida, and I tried to make the whole thing practical. Example, how can I tell when the helmet of salvation is off? Is when you lose so much hope that suicidal thoughts begin to come in. And then it tries to invite a suicidal spirit. And the, 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 the hope of salvation, the helmet of salvation is off. And that's why we have to put back on the hope of our salvation, the hope of who's the Lord of our life. And that's only one practical part of it. But it's a really super good teaching for you to learn about the armor of God and the practicalities to that. So it looks like that. And then the other one is called God's grace to overcome. We've been talking a lot about grace. You know, I love this about grace. And here's what I want to say about it. Nothing you do will make God love you more. You can do all you want. It's not going to make you, God love you more. Nothing you do is going to make God love you more just because you do it. And then again, nothing you do is going to make God love you less. His love is always the same. And God demonstrated his love toward us while I was yet a sinner. While I was yet a sinner, Christ died for me. Nothing can change the cross. Whatever I go through, and you ever had the devil lie and say, well, if he loves you, why did he allow this to happen? You ever had that happen? I've had it happen. And it, it, it's a warfare going on in your mind. It's a battle. And that's the part where, okay, uh, I'll rely on God's, I'll rely on God's goodness. I will come to God. Even in my weakness, I will come to God. Hebrews 4. Uh, we have a great and merciful high priest who is touched with our feelings. One version says he, he identifies or is with our feelings. And then it goes on to say, so let us come boldly to the throne room of grace, obtain mercy. That's for our failures. And then find the grace in time of need. So God just, God just doesn't stop with, hey, God, I messed up and I need mercy. He's like, well, let me give you grace now to overcome. Isn't that something? And you know, the thing about it, you're coming to God in your weakness, and you don't feel like you deserve it. Right? And that's what, the Bible says we grow in knowledge. Thank God for knowledge. You know the truth that you'll set you free. We grow in knowledge and grace, it says in 2 Peter chapter 3. So how many of you operate in all the knowledge you know all the time? Young man, I was looking back there to see if you're going to raise your hand, man. You're a good young man. He didn't do that. All right. Awesome. No, we, none of us have operated in all the knowledge we know all the time. And here's what I found out. And it's a good sermon, but it's not our sermon, but it's worth saying. When you love Jesus and you have a real heart for Jesus, you don't want to mess up, right? And when you do, the enemy finds an opportunity to bring what I call condo bondo, condemnation. And he thought, look at you, and you call yourself a Christian, and you just did this or did that or whatever. And, and then it becomes a thing where we'll feel guilty or we'll feel, start feeling condemned, and the enemy tries to take advantage of that. 
in our weakness. And that's where I can come to the throne room of God boldly. And I go, Lord, yeah, I, I, just, I didn't handle that too good right there. And so I just ask you for mercy. Thank you for that. And I, I, I'm now asking for grace to be able to overcome. So this is called God's grace to overcome. And some titles I will share to you. And once again, I'm, I'm, well, I'll give this one. I'll give this away. Uh, it's called God's grace to overcome. And it's called the blessing of endurance. Ooh, sounds like good stuff, doesn't it? How many of y'all like enduring? Isn't that a great word? Okay, well, that went over. Good to, who'd like to have this on the blessing of endurance? Would you like to have that? Ma'am in the back, can you come up here? Let me give this to you. Thank you, Roger. Thank you. And then the next one's called, uh, what is this one called? Oh, it worked for Job, and it worked for Joseph, and it'll work for you. You know, I was talking to pastor. You all know the story about Joseph, the, the, the young man with the coat of many colors. We all know that story. You know, where he was going along, doing great, and his brother decided, you know, I think, I don't think we'll kill him. We'll just sell him into slavery. Aren't you kind, brothers? That's awesome. You didn't kill him, just sold him into slavery. And, and there's a big old story in it. Then he gets with Potiphar, and his wife wants to lie with him day after day after day. And he was just, he just said, no, 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 no. How can I do this sin against God? I can't do that. And she lied about him. Well, now he went from slavery into the prison. And every time the Bible said God was with him. Really? Now, what if you didn't know the end of the story? Gets sold in slavery and God was with him. Really? Then he gets lied about, gets thrown into prison and God was with him. Really? <laughs> See, if you don't know the end of the story, it, it doesn't look it's like it, he must open the door somewhere. Now, it's possible. But in some cases, not always the doors open, just life brings stuff. Are y'all, y'all okay with that? This is a really good teaching on the grace of God. So over here, no, not again, over here, who'd like to have this teaching? Yes, sir. Say again. Someone's name starts with J, pastor said. Are you serious? Our funny young man starts with J. Come on up here. Axel's I was thinking about giving it to you, man. Way to go, J. You can thank you. You can thank your pastor for that, or starts with Jay. Yeah, okay. John. Oh, okay. All right, John. And I'm going to give this to you, young man. You raise your hand. It's called accountable to God. Ooh. Can't blame other for people for why we're not going to obey God. We're accountable for ourselves. It's a good teaching. Can you, Roger, you're so awesome. Thank you so much. And then, uh, what's, what's the next one? This is for A and B. So you get two of them. It's called divine strengthenings. This is big. Anytime God asks you to do something or leads you to do something, he'll always give you the divine strength to do it. I was in a church in Mobile, Alabama that went through a kind of a difficult time they've overcome. And I remember saying, just by the Spirit really, that a divine vision requires divine strength to accomplish it. Because the moment it's divine, the enemy tries to oppose it. Y'all remember Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane? And he's praying, and he said, of course, we know the story. Father, not my will, but yours be done. We know the story, right? And then the Bible said, oh, I think it's only in Luke, the Gospel of Luke. The Bible said an angel came down and strengthened him. Wow. And if Jesus needed it, maybe we just might. Are you all with me? It's a wonderful teaching. So who'd like to have this on divine strengthenings? And uh, ha, ha, ha. I don't know. I don't know what. I don't know what to do here. Yeah, I'll just. I'll give it to her. When you get through, look at the look at the people behind you. Would you give it to them when you finish it? That'll work. All right. That that that'll do. So here you go. And how about that? You both get it. So isn't that cool? Okay. Yep. Y'all did good. All right. So it looks like this is called the the uh, the grace to overcome. All right. Now let's review one little one little quick thing here. Uh, what we learned about offense is Jesus is anointed to heal the brokenhearted. We found that out. And that was activated this morning. A lot of you activated that anointing. And thank God that you did. And, and thank God for the result of a healing. And I can't help but think that God would do more than that. So be open to healing always. But we found out the Apostle Paul said, uh, this being so that there's a resurrection, I myself always strive. That's an athletic term. I apply athletic discipline. I deaden my body, I strive, I work at, I take pain at having a conscience without offense towards God and man. 
And this is our guiding spirit. And you know, I hope that you'll take this scripture, you'll, you'll, you'll rememorize it, you'll make it a part of you, that this being so, I myself always strive to have a conscience without offense towards God and man. We want to get out of here with no offense. And so we can do that. It's very capable of it. So we found out then that the Greek word for offense was taken from the name of the part of a trap you put the bait. So, you know, that's where you put the cheese on it, peanut butter, whatever. That's where they got the Greek word offense from, where you put the bait on the part of the trap. And different versions say uh, it's a stumbling, a stumbling block to fall by the way, that which will hinder you, and it will definitely do that. But literally, it means to be ensnared and entrapped. So we use that example of how if you eat and nibble on it, then you get entrapped, and then now we are in a very bad spot. And you all know as well as I do, if we get offended and we're in a trap, there's how are you going to live a victorious life in an overcoming life when you're, when you're in a trap? So we really need to do all we can to be resistant against offenses. Very resistant. And, and, and realize it. You know, realize, oh, okay, I know what's going on right now. And, you know, actually, I think I'm going to call my first sermon, the one with this morning, I'm going to call it. <laughs> no, uh -uh, I'm not taking that. Well, that was a challenge for the people making tapes right there. How do you make that a title? You can call it whatever you want. But you understand, right? If, if we smell the bait and we know what's going on, there's no way we're going to take the bait because we're aware. I know what's going on here. Satan, and I proved that this morning, Satan is using people as bait to get me in the trap that he set here. He's trying to take advantage of this, and I'm just not going to fall in it. Now, actually, when you read about Jesus, and uh, remember he turned, he turned uh, to Peter and said, get behind me, Satan, for thou art an offense unto me. Remember we shared that this morning? Now, Jesus did two things. How did he respond in an offensive situation? Number one, he rebuked the devil. So take authority over the devil, rebuke him when you're in an irritating situation or, you know, something's starting to, you know, really aggravate you or offend you. And it's just like, all right, Santa, know what you're doing here. I bind you in Jesus' name. And the second is a little bit more challenging is you continue to love the offender. Yeah, I know. Thank you for all the amens and escalades. It's more challenging. And Jesus kept loving Peter. Now, like I said this morning, now, P loving you mean I'm going to forgive you. Now, but you broke trust. So I'm not just going to open up and trust you immediately, but I am going to forgive you. And trust has to be regained again. There's nothing wrong with that. Are we okay so far? So that's kind of review what we did this morning. We hit a lot of different stories. I hope to get some more really, really good story here as we get rolling. So uh, let's go to Luke chapter 4 once again. And uh, let's go to uh, verse 16. And, you know, this is, this is where we apply this this morning. A lot of you responded. You did wonderful. You were honest and before the Lord. And let's let, you know, let God do what he does. So Luke 4 verse 16 the Bible says, uh, 18, I apologize, Luke 4, 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he, God, has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to, to, preach deliverance to the captive, recovering sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. So I want, what we're going to look at is, Jesus is sent and anointed to heal the brokenhearted. Now, if you have an NIV, a New American Standard Bible, if you have other versions, you notice it leaves that out. Go to Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1 and 2, and that's what Jesus is reading from, the book of Isaiah, and it says that he, he binds or he heals the brokenhearted. Uh, you can trust your Bible. There's nothing wrong with it. There, there's reasons why. I won't get into it. Just know this. Just know Jesus is sent and anointed to heal the brokenhearted. Okay? Just know that. And so that's exactly what he does, exactly what he will do. Now, go to hmm, Philippians chapter 1. Let's, let's go there. Philippians chapter 1. And uh, there's a prayer there that's a good prayer to pray over your church. And I want to encourage you to do that. A prayer, begin to pray this prayer over your church and, uh, and even over your family in Philippians chapter 1, starting at verse 9. Philippians 1 verse 9. And this I pray, so he's praying, 
that your love may abound still more and more. Now, when you read the New Testament, you'll find out that the, the love of God is shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Ghost. And that love I have, the Bible encourages us, it's supposed to increase and abound. The love I have needs to increase. The love I have needs to increase and abound. Let that love, excuse me, let that love increase and increase and abound and abound. So he's sitting here, so I pray that the love you have would increase and abound, but now how? In knowledge. Now we gained some knowledge this morning, we're going to gain more knowledge tonight. And in all what? Discernment. So the love will increase and abound in knowledge and also in discernment. Now, knowledge meaning what? Well, we're going to go over some things. We're going to learn about the God kind of love. We're going to gain knowledge about that. If you read 1 Corinthians 13, you know, you read all of 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, Galatians chapter 5, Romans chapter 13. These are love chapters you can read and build up your consciousness in these areas. So I'm going to go back and relate to that in a moment. But then it says, in all discernment. Now, what's that? You know, the Bible says that in Thessalonians that God teaches us to love one another. Did you know what said that? The Bible teaches us to love one another. That's the discerning part. Lord, I'm in a kind of a difficult situation. I'm dealing with an individual that's difficult or we just not tend to get along or things have escalated. And Lord, I'm just not quite sure how to handle this. And God can give you discernment, give you understanding, leadership, guidance, speak to you, speak through the word, a vision or dream, whatever, to give you discernment in how to handle that situation. Because each situation is unique. Now, let's learn something about this knowledgeable part, and uh, before we do, let's go to Psalm 119, verse 165. Psalm 119, verse 165. Let's go there for a second. Psalm 119, and we're going to go to verse 165. Ooh, that's way over there. Okay, I found it. All right. You all ready? The Bible says, great peace have those that love your law. And nothing shall offend them or cause them to stumble. Great peace have those that love your law and never say nothing. Everyone say nothing. Now, what does nothing mean? De nada. Nothing. Shall offend them or make them stumble. That's an offense. All right, so how many of y'all ever been offended before and your great peace left? Right, exactly. So great peace will maintain if we love the law. Now, that's old covenant. Now, let's take that principle from the old covenant and take it through the cross and interpret it under the new covenant. And under the new covenant in the New Testament, the Bible says, we've been given a new commandment. And the commandment is to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And on this hangs all the law and all the word of the prophets. So now here we can interpret that correctly through the cross and say, great peace have those that love the law of love and nothing shall offend them. That was the first thing God taught me. I'm not going to get into it. You know, I had four or five different doctrines coming at me. I, I mean, just, you know, and I was just a young Christian. I was loving God and I wanted to do what's right. And one guy said, if you don't belong to our church, you're not going to make it to heaven. Another guy said, if you don't read a certain Bible, you're reading all the other versions of the devil. And then another one saying, you can be filled with the Spirit and speak in other tongues. And I'm in that camp. But before being raised traditionally, it was of the devil. And it just, it was really difficult for me to receive that. But God was very gracious and kind and opened, my, opened up some experiences that were backed up by the Bible. It's, it's a great sermon, but that's another, I always preach five sermons in one anyway. So coming back around. So all these, was, and I'm like, Lord, what? I mean, man, I, I, what am I supposed? To? And I, I was so distraught in the Teleco Mountains. I was in the, in the middle of the road. And I went, God, I wasn't this confused as a sinner. A sinner sins. That's, they got one direction. Okay, that went over real good. All right. And I said, Lord, I, just, I don't know what to do here. I, I'm confused. And I began to open the Bible. I won't go into it. But God, the Lord began to show me that, that uh, we, I, this commandment we have is the commandment, the commandment of love from a pure heart. 
from a sincere conscience and from pure faith. And some desiring to be teachers of the law have swerved from that commandment of love. Do you ever know, did you ever read the Pharisees and the Sadducees? They weren't very loving people. Remember the Jesus was there and he looked out at them and a man had a withered hand. And, he, and they just tore those boys up for him to heal on the Sabbath. Just worked against their religion. And so this man's there and he's looking at them and he goes, you know, is it, is it, is it right to do good on the Sabbath? And he said, men, stretch forth your hand. He did. His hand was made normal. Can you imagine being that man? You, you're going to thank God he healed you on the Sabbath. But the religious leaders could care less about the human being, could care less that he was whole and made well. They, they just want to keep their law. And they're mean about it. But not Jesus. He's different about it. And that's where we want to be people that operate out of the love of God. In doing so, if we, here's what I found out. You can't fight love, and if you respond in love, you're always going to win. And, and I'll get into some scripture on there in 1 John. Now, let's learn something about the God kind of love. Can you put that up on there for me? Is it Matt? Did I get that right? Yeah. Oh, and let me say this. I do know that Sister Pastor's name is Pam. So why did you say Pat? I'm trying to sell books in case you got offended. <laughs> Someone told me that I go, I know it's Pam. Did I do that? I don't know what goes on, y'all. I mean, look, look, when it comes to my own name, I have to do this sometimes. Yes, it's David Husky. That's. Can you put a 1 Corinthians 13 for me, please? All right, so let's read about the God kind of love, the God kind, okay? So here we go, and we're going to read it from this, the Amplified Classic. A lot of you already know this already, but let's review. Everyone say the God kind. All right, it's not our kind of love, it's the God kind of love, and it's this. All right, love endures long, it is patient and kind. So while love is enduring, and it's enduring a long time, it exercises being patient and kind. And then love never is envious, nor bowls over with jealousy. It's not boastful or vainglorious. It does not display itself haughtily. The love of God does not have pride in it. And the love of God is not jealous. It's not going to try to control with envy and jealousy. It just doesn't, it's not in the love of God. Next verse, please. Verse 5. The love of God is not conceited, arrogant, inflated with pride. It is not rude, unmannerly. Does not act unbecomingly. Love, now look at this, God's love in us. God's love in us. Does not insist on its own right or its own way, because it is not self-seeking. Now watch this. It's not touchy. It's not fretful. It's not resentful. It takes no account of evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. And everybody went, wow. Amen's right, but it's like, wow. Are you serious now, Reverend Husky? Are you serious? Everyone say, God's love, God's love. in us. Yes. See, it's, it's a yielding to that love of God that's on the inside. Now, one way I do it is I gain knowledge. I read this over and over and over. I, I, I make it a part of my inner consciousness. I read other like 1 John, 2 John, 3 John. I gain knowledge about the love of God. I'm building up my inner man on these love of God scriptures. Now, let me say this. In every church I go to, there's always a person that can get offended easily. They're touchy. They're sensitive. And so they get hurt very, and, 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 and I'm, I'm ministering to somebody, I guarantee you, I'm ministering to somebody right now. Now look, I don't know who you are, keep smiling. You know, I really believe most offenses happen because our pride was violated. Selah. Let's, let's think on that for a second. Now I'm not trying to hurt anybody. Can you, I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to help us. 
So we need to grow to maturity. We, look, we don't want to be in Jesus, a 20-year-old Christian, and I, I'm still need, I still need pull-ups change. I mean, we, come on, someone. We need, to, we need to develop in maturity. We need to grow up, in the, and the love of God will do that. If you'll apply the love of God, the love of God will put you in a place that we're not touchy, and we're not so easily offended. Because if we are, the devil tries to take advantage of it. So, I'm talking to someone, I know that without a doubt, so here's what you do. Go to God about it. Lord, I, I'm one of those. I get, I, I get offended easily. I'm touchy. And, and man, you know, Reverend Husky just got on my case and, and I received it with joy. And Lord, I want you to help me in this area. Then begin to read 1 Corinthians 13, the love of God in different versions. Begin to read 1 John, 2 John, 3 John. Begin to read Galatians chapter 5. Begin to read Romans 12 and 13. Oh, John 15. St. John 15 is great. And you start developing yourself up. Then you're leaning on God to be able to live and operate in the love of God. Go, what are you doing? You're, in, you're, you're getting it to increase. You're getting it to abound. See what I'm saying? So if, if we're sensitive, if we're touchy, it's just, it's an employment the devil will use to get us into this trap over and over and over. And he takes advantage over and over and over and over. So that's where we do not want to be. We want to resist being so sensitive to where, you know, my, you know, well, that hurt my feelings. Yeah, I know. I've had things hurt my feelings too. But I want to deaden the carnal nature. And let love rule, let love of God have its place above my carnal nature. I'm going to let the love of God, I'm going to humble myself before God and let that humility, I can receive grace. And that grace is going to overcome the pride I may have. Did that, that make sense? So I want you to overcome that. And by the way, remember I told you this morning I had God kind of talking to me? This is, what, this is it right here. And he, in worship, he goes, remember the sensitivity part? Yeah, yeah, right here. Sensitivity? Yes, Lord, we'll do it. We're doing it. So there, there. <laughs> Amen for the preacher. So I know there's some things here where God wants to help you overcome that. And, and God knows it, and God's trying to reach you right now and help you right now. And I've just given you ammo to begin to apply and to do that with. Now, as we go further, we're going to learn more. We're going to learn more about this when I get further. So, right. so let's come back to the main verse again because there's another verse. I don't know. What was the last one we did? Was it verse 5? I don't remember. Was it okay? So we want to see verse 6. If you bring that up for us, please. Thank you. All right. The love of God. It does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness but rejoices when right and truth prevail. See, the Bible says, speak the truth in love. Oh, that takes guts sometimes. In Ephesians, the Bible says, speak the truth, speak the truth in love. And sometimes we won't tell the truth because we know it, 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 it's gonna, this, this, this may challenge them. And I don't feel like challenging them today. I don't want to have a, an issue or a rift, so I'll just kind of skip around the whole process. And so I'll just say something, but it's not the truth. So the Bible says, speak the truth, not harshly, not rudely. Speak the truth in love. For example, when I told you I went through my offense in 1993, I was with people in prayer, or, or peer Peer ministry people, and they're like, and I call that justifiable anger, and they said, everything you're saying is right, you know, all I was saying was correct, but your anger is sin against God. They spoke the truth in love. They weren't rude. They were being mean. Now, I don't know about you, but if I'm in a rut, I don't want someone going, oh, it'll be okay, it'll be okay, it'll be okay. You stay in your little rut. It'll be all right. I don't, want so, I don't want to be that person that's in a rut. I, I want help out. And if you got to speak the truth that challenges me, I don't care. I want out. How many of y'all want out? Amen. you got to speak the truth in love. And so that begins to apply. That's where, oh, oh stay on the, stay on the, oh, stay on the, yeah, the definitions. Thank you, sir. You're doing great. All right, so it does not rejoice in injustice, unrighteousness, but rejoice in right and truth prevail. Next verse, please. Verse 7, love bears up under anything and everything that comes. Wow. 
You know, the Bible says God will not allow you to be tempted above what you're able. And I'm thinking, well, man, if you do that, we got to be on the borderline of it. Because what I'm going through right now, it doesn't feel like I can handle this thing. Remember going through an offense? It was a real challenging time. And I call it the prophet lady, Anita. I'm very connected to her and her to me. And she's just a real, a true prophetess, true prophetess, very respectful. And so I call her, she calls me, and she goes, David, how you doing? And, and I was just overwhelmed. I said, I just, great man of faith and power. I said, I can't do this anymore. Sure did. You better believe it. I can't do this anymore. You know what she said? Oh, David, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Yeah. <laughs> I needed that by God. <laughs> There's that other men in slap. And you know what? See, the Bible says the cares of this world chokes the word. And I was so overwhelmed with my care that was going on from so many different directions, it was suffocating that word that I knew in Philippians 4. I got it highlighted. It's in yellow. I mean, I might even have it in orange. That's a southern colloquial term for orange. It's an important scripture. But just because I know it doesn't mean I'm living in it. See, some will say, well, you probably know this, but it doesn't mean we're doing it. So she said, David, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And when she said that, I went, in my heart, I go, I believe that promise. I, but it escaped me because of the care. It escaped that promise. But she brought the promise back up, and I went, that's right. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I believe that promise. I trust that promise. I can do that. And from that point on, I never said, I can't do this anymore. Because I believe that promise. And that promise did work. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens. Say this with me. I can. I can. You what? Oh, you mean you can't? You mean you can't? I can. Do what? So if you're facing something right now, you can. I can what? Through who? Who what? Hmm. We all need divine strengthenings at times. All of us. Oh, that's another sermon. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, moving right along. <laughs> Psalm 119, verse 165. Great peace have those that love thy law, the law of love, and nothing shall offend them. Right, and we just got through reading part of that. Is the love of God is not touchy, not fretful, not resentful, takes no account evil done to it, pays no attention to us or for wrong. I, I'll share a little story. You ever have someone wrong you and you know you got to forgive them, right? So, so we forgive them. But, you know, have you ever felt like, okay, I, I'm forgiving them. Have you ever felt like, you know, okay, I've forgiven them. And I, okay, that, that I've done. But, you know, I, I think I'll just throw in a little bit of, just a little, just a little toler, just a little, uh, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, can't, I can't get it right now. You know, when you're, it's like you're going to, you're not going to be mean, but you're just going to throw a little jab in there. Passive aggressive. Passive aggressive. <laughs> wow, that's a deep term, man. Passive aggressive. That would identify it. And it'd be a thing where you're just going to, you know, in, in, infl inflict a little bit of thought in the person because, you know, you need to know you did me wrong. I've forgiven you, but I'm just going to throw just a little jab, a passive aggressive little text. And so when you do that, what happens? It, it creates a wall. It created a gap. It created coldness. It created distance, right? And so, you know, I remember going through this and, and, and I... I would just throw out just, just, just little things like that just to, just to let the person know that, you know, you, you did a wrong thing, but yet walking out forgiveness wasn't complete. And uh, I remember going to the Lord about it. And, and I just I said, Lord, you know, I'm just, I'm frustrated. For about two months, I'm just frustrated in this situation. And this ain't right. I know it's not right, so I'm just talking to you about it. And um, so as I'm talking to God and, 
and he, he, he said, well, you know, here's, here's what's going on. Here's the situation. Anytime something goes wrong, you go back to the past, back to the past, forget those things that are behind, or, or better yet, uh, interpreted there is, I take no account of the evil done to me. I pay no attention to a suffered wrong. When we keep going back to the past, we're paying attention to a suffered wrong. So I'd go back to the past, you know, and I'd blame, well, this is going on because that decision was made. This is happening because that decision was made. And I keep going back to the past. And Lord's like, look, you, you don't want to change anything anyway. And I go, I don't. And he goes, here's what you're doing. You keep blaming the past. Here's what you need to do. And instead of going back, blaming the past is ask me for wisdom because my wisdom will give you the right answer for now, today, and it'll keep your peace. Wisdom over, still can't find the word. It's not toleration. I'm sorry, y'all. I mean, I have to work at getting Pam's name right, so praise God. Okay. <laughs> it's a big word. It's not big. I'm just not pulling it up. Anyway, so the Lord really helped me. So instead of a jab or passive aggressive regarding what someone does and, and, and going back, have anybody ever gone back to blaming? If, well, if they had done that, I wouldn't be doing that. Anybody ever done that before? I was doing, but the love of God doesn't take account of that. Gee whiz. And I mean, that's a challenge, right? And so, but I can ask God, okay, God, give me wisdom right now for how to handle this situation. It'll be the right answer, the right way to do it, and it's going to keep your peace. That was worth it for tonight, just for that. Isn't that a good word? Yeah. And so, once again, that's applying the love of God. Is it challenging? Yes, it is challenging. But God helps you every step of the way. We just have to be open for God to speak what he needs to speak and say what he needs to say. And not be afraid of it. Amen. So we're, we're, okay, we're okay there? So that's the God kind of love. Now I want to, uh, mm, let's see. Let's go to Romans 13, 8. Let me make another point. Then we'll move a little bit further. Romans 13, chapter 8. We'll start there. Romans 13, 8, the Bible says, Owe no one anything except to love one another, for he who loves another has fulfilled what? The law. Romans, Romans 13, 8. Romans 13, 8. Y'all have your Bibles, don't you? Or, or your iPhone Bible? Android Bible? It's important. I want you to follow along. This is important. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for he who loves another has fulfilled the law. So great peace have those that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. If I walk in the, the love of God. See, I, I don't owe you money. I don't owe you anything, but I do owe to love you. The Bible says in 1 John that we love God because he first loved us. And then because God loves us, we ought to love one another because others are begotten of God. You are sons and daughters of the same father of mine. We all have the same dad. And so I'm to love you because God loves me and I'm to love you with that love that God gave me. And it, yeah, it's challenging at times, but it produces the right results. It it. Okay, example. I was working for a ministry, and I was, I was teaching, you know, in the Bible school and doing, doing service for them. And, you know, we went back. It was, a great, it was a great time. But, you know, they made a statement like, look, here, we're, we, we're, our meetings are going to be probably extended. If they're extended, we want to keep your calendar open and minutes for us for on, on this certain time. So based on their word, I kept my calendar open. And so it was extended, but they had someone else preach and teach. They didn't ask me to teach and preach. And I could have got offended. Because, I mean, I can't get a meeting now. So I, I lost a meeting. I lost a weekend of going out there ministering because I kept my, they didn't keep their word, but I kept mine. And so then I went, but I went to the Lord about it. Lord, you, you know exactly what went on here. You know what was said. You know what was done. And this is how it ended up. You know what, God? I'm going to act like it never happened. I'm just going to walk in the love of God. You know, and, and that was, my, I traveled a lot. And my grandmother was my personal secretary. <laughs> she put she put finance in the bank whenever the ministry got blessed with finances. She said, she said honey, someone sent you a check for $1,000. Really? Who is it? 
They didn't put a name down. Really? Father, thank you so much. You paid me for a weekend. I didn't get to work. You respond by the love of God, and you're going to see God do things. You hearing me? Now, let me say this. When you begin to operate in the love of God like this, you are going to grow out of carnality. And this is what moves you to a spiritual plane that you're actually able to walk out not getting offended. Now, let me say this. What I'm going to teach tonight is uh, how to live in the love of God, overcome by the love of God. But according to Psalm 119 verse 165, that, that we po- it is possible to live a life without offense and not get offended. It's possible. Now, but it's pro-level Christianity. I mean, you play Pop Warner League, high school league, college league, and finally you make it to the pros. Are y'all with me? And, and you know, and hopefully, hopefully, you know, we're going to walk around with, I got my pro helmet on, Reverend Husky. Y'all didn't get that, did you? I'm moving up to pro level Christianity. Because this is pro, and not everyone makes it. And it takes a lot of diligence and a lot of, of uh, striving as an athlete to get to that place. But it's, it's, I've gone, I've gone, I've gone for years, really, without getting offended, years. But a, an offense may come in, and I, I'm, I'm quick, I'm very quick to deal with it, very quick. And some things are easy, some are not so easy. And it just, you, but you're walking this out by God, and we come to a place that you know, we're in a place of, of fullness in God, a place I'm not held in this trap, and I'm not held to my past. I've got a future in front of me. Did that make sense, everyone? Right. So, one way, we read about the God kind of love. The God kind. It's not touchy. The God kind of love is not touchy. So, what does that mean? So, that means if I build myself up in the God kind of love, I won't be touchy. Because love's not touchy. Love doesn't get offended easily. I'm walking in the love of God. It toughened me up. Now Satan can't take advantage. Isn't that good? God wanted me. God wanted me right there. We obeyed, Lord. Amen. Isn't it good to obey the Lord? Now here's the other part. My love increases the bound, not just based on knowledge, but on discernment. And now what it said? Discerning. The Bible says in Thessalonians that, that he, Paul said, I'm not going to teach you on the love of God because you're taught yourself to love one another. But there's nothing wrong with being taught on it. He's just relating that to the Thessalonians at that point. Now, let me talk about this thing called discernment. Okay, I'm going to back up in Bible school. This is a really, this is an interesting story. Okay, Bible school. I'm going to Bible school, and I work at Albert Equipment Company with three other brothers. One of those is Jerry Weinzerl. Some others, we were working at Albert Equipment Company, putting up parts, taking down parts, and at least it got me through Bible school. And I believe that's where God wanted me, and it actually proved to be so. And we had this other guy there that he called himself a Christian, but I call him the mystery Christian. Now, what do you mean by that? Well, he said he was a Christian, but his actions kept you in mystery about it. Have you ever met this man or a woman? No one's saying a thing. The mystery Christian. So in other words, he's a Christian, but he would, here's what he would do. He would say things and do things and, and to push your button. You know what I mean by pushing your button? You know what I mean by that? So he would just do something to get you to fly off. To get you to fly off the handle. It, <clears throat> excuse me. would say this, say that, push a button, and you, you kind of just lose it. And he would, that was his practice. That's what he would do. And I remember one time he was doing that, picking on Brad, and I, I thought, I'm going to get a part all right, but I ain't putting it on no friggin' shelf. I'm sorry, that's a word we use in California. It, it wasn't a bad word then. I don't think it's a bad word now. If it was, forgive me, I'll say something else. And that, that walked, okay, well, now, so after a while, every, we worked every, one Saturday out of the month. So I'm working this Saturday. I'm in shipping. And there's the mystery Christian on the other side. And I saw him and I went, oh, man. I went, no, no, no. I'm not going there. 
It's going to be good. It's going to be a good day. It's going to be fine. I'm going to get along. This is going to work out great. So I, that was the attitude I put on. So about the first 20, 25 minutes is going great. Then he gets in his normal routine. He said this, he said that, said this, said that. Then he made this one certain statement. He didn't hit a button. Oh, not at all. He hit the red button. And when he hit the red button, I just told him off. Didn't cuss, but told him off and walked into an office and sat down and I said, bless God. Because he deserved it. That was my thinking. Remember, I'm going to Bible school. <laughs> I'm learning. And God began to talk to me very clearly. God said, you got out of the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, goodness, kind of telling somebody off. <laughs> Love, joy, peace, goodness, kindness, losing it, getting upset. Yeah, Lord, I sure did. I, I, I got out of the fruit of the Spirit. I sure did. And the Lord said, now go and apologize. I jumped up out of my seat. I said, God, it wasn't my fault. Anyway, that office, one was a wall. rest of it was all glass. And I know what they thought. And they thought, oh, that's a rhema guy. I think he's talking to God. And I was talking to God. It ain't my fault, Lord. I didn't do it. He did. It's not my fault. And God again said, you, you got out of the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah. Now go and apologize. Man, I, I, I don't want to have to do that. My carnal nature, you ever see those neon lights going open, open, open? You ever, well, there's a neon light going all right, but it's going pride, pride, pride. I don't want to go, I don't want to go and say, you ready for this? I'm oh, sorry. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry. You know, we can't just say, I'm really sorry. I'm oh, sorry. You know, we did. Never mind. Let me, come, let me come back on course here. And so I'm, and now, now let me say something. Now, the love of God, Romans 5, 5, the love of God has shed or brought in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, not in our flesh and not in my mind. It's in my heart. So my will is doing this. My will is searching. Am I going to obey God who just told me what to do? Or am I going to obey my flesh and my emotion that doesn't want to say, I'm sorry? So my will's doing this. And I remember saying, I remember saying, God, I love you so much that I want to be obedient. This is what I'm going to say. The foundation to our growth is a love relationship. It's not the do's and don'ts. If I do this, don't do that, don't do this, do that. It's not do's and don'ts. It's a love relationship. I love him because he first loved me. And that motivated me to make a right decision. Lord, I love you so much. I, 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 want, I want to obey you. Now, let me see. Now, I don't, I don't have this perfected. There are still times I get out of the food of the Spirit. Y'all looking at me like an old cow at a new gate, man. I'm not seeing that here before I, I know this is challenging, but it's the right, I'm teaching you the right thing. Promise you. So I don't have that perfected, okay? I hope I'm better than I was three or two or five years ago, but I don't have it perfected. So here I go, and I'm like, okay, and I went, God, I'm going to obey. So my will locked to my spirit. Well, and then, and then I've got my fist like this because I don't want to. Now, not that I wanted to hit him, it was just hard on my flesh. Now, let me say this. When you walk in the love of God, according to the God kind of love, there's sometimes it's going to be like sandpaper on your flesh. Burn, baby, burn. And it stinks when it smells, when it burns. I already did the joke about I saved 30% more of my car insurance, right? I did that. Okay. So I got it like this, and I went to him. I said, brother, and I told him, just like God told me, I said, brother, will you forgive me because I got out of the fruit of the Spirit? So I told him, and here's what he said. Well, I am a thorn in the side, aren't I?
Now, let me tell you why. Because he knew what he was doing. If I can just push enough buttons to these Bible school students and I see them lose it, now listen, it's going to make me feel better about myself. When you have to make someone feel bad for you to feel good, we need a transformation experience in Jesus Christ. That's what he's doing. Now, from that point on, me and him got along. Now, I'm not saying to work in every situation, but we got along. Yeah, matter of fact, one, at 2 o'clock in the morning, he called me and goes, can you come and pick me up and get me out of jail? Oh, that'll bless you. 2 o'clock in the morning? And I'm like, what, what, do what? Yeah, they, they let me out of jail. Can you come and get me? And I'm like, and the Lord, if you do it under the least of them, you've done it unto me. Well, if it was you, Jesus, I'd take you out of jail. <laughs> we don't win <and> did it. <laughs> okay, well, praise God, I'm... Just so glad we're uplifted in the things of the Spirit of God. <laughs> Look, I, I know what I'm saying. Some of it is challenging, but it should be eye-opening. Because the love of God is going to rub against your flesh. But the end result is fantastic. The end result is you see God move. Let me show you. Go to 1 John chapter 4. All right, 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. Look at, look at verse 16, okay? 1 John 4, 16. 1 John 4, 16. Okay. And we, and we have known, look at the word known. That's an important word. Circle it if you can or highlight it. We have known and believed. Two keys. I know it, now I choose to believe it. The love that God has for me. So I need to know God loves me. Now I must choose to believe that he loves me. John 17, Jesus is in prayer, praying for his disciples. He's praying for us. And he said, Father, now listen, Jesus said, Father, I thank you that you love them as you love me. Wow. Now, can I comprehend that? No. Do I know it? Yes. Do I believe it? Yes. But I can't comprehend it in my mentality. But I choose, uh, Father, I thank you, you love me like you love Christ. We're joint heirs in Christ. Now watch this. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in who? God. And God abides in him. See, when you respond in the love of God, when you release the love of God, you just put God in the situation. Can you see that? Now, let me, let me show you how this literally works. Let me show you how that I can do Psalm 119, 165, and I can keep this thing alive. I, that I'm going to show you literally how it works. So now go to 1 John 1, okay? Are y'all doing okay? And I'm going to wrap this thing up. 1 John 1, look at verse 5. Look at verse 5. 1 John 1, 5. This is the message we heard from him and declare to you that God is light. God's light. And in him, <coughs> excuse me, is no darkness at all. God's light, in light, no darkness. Now, hang on a second. Lord have mercy. The Bible said God is love, and now the Bible says God is light. Well, which one is he? Mike's right. Both. It's both. Because when I, life, light, and love are synonymous terms. If I walk in the light of God, I'm walking in the love of God, and I'm walking in eternal life. So one step out of love is a step into darkness. Okay? Am I going too fast? Am I throwing out too much to think about? Oh. See, how can I lighten it? Who's got a joke here? Who can tell a good joke? The young man. He, really? What's, what's it like? I'm kidding you. You're okay. You're okay. All right. Now, let me show you how this works, okay? God is love and God is light. If I walk in the light, I'm walking in the love of God. I walk in the love of God, I'm walking in the light. Let me show you how this works. Go to 1 John 2. Now, pay close attention to your Bible. 
This is really simple. You just have to pay attention. All right, look at verse 9. 1 John 2, 9. He who says he's in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. He who loves his brother abides in the light. Now watch this. And there's no cause for stumbling or offense in him. So in other words, when I walk in the light of the love of God, there's nothing in me the devil can do to get me offended. Because I'm walking the light of, I'm not touchy, I'm not fretful, I'm not resentful, I take no evil done to me, I pay no attention to a suffered wrong. I'm walking the light. So in me, there's nothing the devil can do to tempt me to get me to fall because when I love my brother, when I'm walking the light, there's nothing that can make me stumble. Can you all see that? Can you see that? Next, next verse 11. But he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. What a bad place to be. And so the love, the love of God is like this. It's like, it's a force. So in my heart is the love of God. When an event comes, the love of God says, nope, nope, can't, can't get in here. Nope, can't come in here. This has got light. This is full of light. This is full of love. You can't. The love of God cannot get offended. And that's how it works right there. Did that make sense? Can you kind of see that? How, how it would work? Now, Okay, I told you I did some horseback riding. A bunch of guys were going to leave from Taos, New Mexico. We're going up to Colorado. And it's like, I was about maybe eight or 12 of us. We all got horses, man. So it was great. We're out there in the Colorado mountains, man. And we got the horses, you know, with the rope between the two trees. And there's our horses, you know. And we're at the fireplace saying, kumbaya, my Lord, kumbaya. It was just great. <laughs> Cooking potatoes and fish and all kinds of stuff. And so we wake up in the morning. Uh, and, you know, to go fishing, we come back at night. Well, I forgot to bring a flashlight. So I thought, okay, you know, you, you got to use the restroom. So I'm like, okay, I'll take care of business. So I'm walking and, you know, you hit a limb and you about trip over a log and you can barely see. And then when you come back, you know, at least there's a little bit of light from the fireplace. You make it back. So I thought, well, the next time I have to use, use the restroom, I'm going to borrow someone's flashlight. Toby was an elder. Toby, can I use your flashlight? Sure. So here we go. And, oh, yeah. Oh, when you walk in love, you're walking in light, and in light, nothing can make you stumble. We only stumble in darkness. That's how it works. Thank you, Roger. How it? Amen. I know y'all saying this by faith. <laughs> now, I want to close with this story. And then we'll, let's, we'll, we're gonna, we're gonna, let's wait a second on the Holy Ghost. Let's see what he leads to do. Are y'all okay? All right. Did you learn something? Was it a little heavy? Yes. But does it bring truth and light? Does it help us to see where we need to allow God to work in us? Right? I'm telling you guys, it brings such great results. It's just, so, it's just so awesome. Now, story. I get this bright idea. The Apostle John's still alive. We're going back. We're going back a while. Apostle John's still alive. He's the last apostle, and we know that. They're all dead, but I, we know he's going to be passing pretty soon. So I call, I call Pastor Scott. Pastor Scott, I got an idea. Apostle John's going to be passing away. Let, let, why don't you in the church office believe God? Let's, let's get a jet. Let's fly out there and let's go visit the Apostle John. God's like, that sounds pretty good to me. And I'm like, let's jump on it. So sure enough, we all, we believe God we got. We got the jet. We fly out there. And there's the Apostle John. He comes out of his cave and, and he's looking at us. And we're going, hey, hey, John, man, you know, I'm Dave Husky. This is Pastor Scott. This is all the church here. We're from Illinois. And, and look, we came out here for one reason. We know you're going to be leaving pretty soon, John. And, uh, uh, and you walk with Jesus. You ate with Jesus. You saw all, you heard all his teachings. And John, look, we're just hungry. We love God. And we want to know, John, out of all the revelations that Jesus taught, John, what is the greatest revelation? 
And me and John just gets all spurred up. His eyes are light up and he goes, love ye one another. Okay, all right, Pastor Scott, woo! Yeah, all right, it's Easter. Yeah, let's love ye one another. Yeah, woo! A few years later, I get this crazy bright idea. Pastor Scott, we need to go back. We got to see the Apostle John again. I mean, his departure is very, very close. We just have to go back and we just got to go back and just see him and ask him this important question again. We fly back, we get there and John's a little older, comes out with the cane and we go, Apostle John, we're back, man. It's, it's Dave and, and Scott and all of it. We're, we're here. And, and look, John, look, I know we came before, but we know you're going to be leaving really, really soon. And John, look, we have to know of all the revelation that Jesus taught, what is the revelation? And John pushed himself up on that staff, but this time he's got fire in his eyes. And he says, love ye one another. Makes the point, doesn't it? And when you read the New Testament, that's exactly what he said. Love God and love one another. Family God, that's what we're called to do. We're called to love God and we're called to love one another. The world will know you're his disciples by what? Your love one for another. It didn't say by the anointing. And I love the anointing. It didn't say by miracles. And I love miracles. It didn't say by the supernatural, and I love the supernatural. They're going to know that you are disciples because we love one another. Family of God, we, we've, we've, we've majored in some of the minors. This is majoring in the major. This is major league right here. And it's good. It helps you through every circumstance. We grow in knowledge, and God gives me discernment. How do I handle this? How do I walk? And he'll do just that. Amen? Amen? So build yourself up in the love of God. I'll tell you one thing you can do, and I'm, I, I, we got to pray. Galatians 5, go over the fruit of the Spirit in the morning. Okay, God, Holy Ghost, help me to walk in love, joy, peace, goodness, kindness, temperance, self-control, faithfulness, godliness. Help me to walk in that Holy Spirit. And then at night, here, this takes some backbone. Ask yourself, did I walk in love today? Did I walk in joy today? I mean, when that got pulled out in front of me, I wasn't very joyous. Okay, God, forgive me. I messed up right there. Did I walk in faithfulness today? You know, I told a guy I was going to get there at a certain time. I didn't do it. Matter of fact, I didn't show up at all. I wasn't faithful. God, forgive me. You just go right down the line. And you ready for this? You're not going to like it at first. I said it first. But as you practice that for a while, you start developing your inner consciousness on that is this love, joy, peace, goodness, kindness, temperance. And you'll be so trained on it, you start to get out of that, and the Spirit of God goes, oh, 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 that's not me. And you can make the correction, get right back, and not even get step out and get in that. You make the correction because you developed your inner man on it. It's a great practice. It really is a good thing to do. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, amen. We got somewhere. Are y'all victorious? Are y'all happy? Do you have the grace of God in your life? Thank God for the grace of God. God loves me as I am. Whether I walk in love all the time or not, God loves me as I am. And by God's grace, he's going to work with me and develop me in my love walk. Amen? Amen. Church, I... I you guys are awesome. I know you pay attention. And I just love, in the crowd tonight, you guys, you're, you're still hungry for revelation of the Word of God. And it's wonderful to see your hunger like that. Now, can we, all, let's, can we all just pray now for a minute? If the Spirit of God says to do something, we'll do it. If not, then we'll be through and we can go home. I'm hungry. I'm kidding. I'm not. I mean, I could eat, but I'm not that hungry. I just... I, I got to get you to laugh, man. It was, got too serious in here. It, it, it is, Mike. It is serious stuff. And, you know, and, and, and Pam is saying, you know, I'm, I, I, 
I don't want to choke. This is the meat of the word. This is not for baby Christians. This is not just some for some carnality. This is like, okay, I, I've really got, I really got to grow here. I really need to develop. But the, the rewards of it is fantastic. Just like an athlete for the Olympians. And they work hard. Then they get that medal. And it's like, it was worth it for that one medal. It was worth it. And it'll be worth it for you. Whatever it takes, it will be worth it for the reward. And I can guarantee you, God rewards that. I've never seen someone respond by the love of God, never, and it fail, never. In some pretty difficult circumstances, even some myself, challenged. Just because you're challenged doesn't mean God doesn't love you. Just because we have weaknesses doesn't mean God doesn't love you. We all have them. We all got weaknesses, right? But may, but may we have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably and reverently and with godly fear. How's that happen? By His wonderful grace unmerited favor, divine influence, divine empowerment. God, you know what? This love thing's too big for me, but it's not too big for you. So I'm going to ask you to help me to walk in my love walk. Help me to develop this. Help me to walk in the light of this. You're humbling yourself before God to receive grace. And on that foundation, he begins to do the work. Then I just follow what he's leading me to do. I just follow what he's asking me to do. I just follow his instructions. How do I do that? By faith. Grace gave it, faith receives it, and faith walks it out. No one can boast. God, I'm telling you, there is nothing, absolutely nothing that I can boast about. It ain't there. The foundation of me being here is the grace of Almighty God. And he does wonderful things. He's a good God. As Beth said, Beth said he's a patient God. And I get that. Because he's been, how many of y'all God's been pretty patient with you? He, guys, you, we, we can't mess up, man. He loves us in our weaknesses. Look, if, if, okay, if God loved me while I was a sinner and ungodly, why would he love me less as his child? Now, he's going to love you more, not less, as his child. And that's what the devil comes with this condo bondo stuff. Get away, devil. God loves me. I don't care what you say. All right. Let's pray. Father, we just, wow, man, we thank you so much for your word tonight. It was anointed. Truly, it was, Father. And I thank you for hungry, hungry believers that could receive the truth. Because it, it, it is, it is meat in this word. There's meat in here, no doubt, Father, no doubt. And I ask you to help us to digest it. Holy Ghost, take it and impart into us what we need to walk this out. Help us to be mindful of it, aware of it, and develop in it. And I'm talking about me too, Holy Spirit. Help me to develop this, to become more and more like Jesus Christ. That the love I have, the love we have, would increase and it would abound. Now, Father, we're going to take a moment right now. And we're just going to love on you because you first loved us. We're going to love on you back. We're going to let our hearts soar before your throne and let you know that we adore you and love you. And we're so thankful you're a good God, a loving God, a caring God. And you're always ready to forgive, always ready to forgive. And Lord, not only do I forgive others, but I now choose, God, to forgive myself. I release myself from the voice of self-accusation. I release myself from guilt and condemnation. There is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. And I'm a joint heir in Christ. I'm in Christ Jesus. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses me from all sin. And I walk in the light of that. And I am totally free of my mistakes, my past, my, uh, my failures. I'm free because of your love. And I know you've forgiven me. And now I choose to forgive myself. I 
I'm letting myself off the hook. The Holy Ghost. We're open as a church for whatever you want to do. So it's going to take a few moments and see if you lead any way. We'll obey. If not, then we're good, Holy Ghost. We want to follow you and obey you. Now, Father, I'm asking you to divinely to touch people with the love of God. It's tangible. The love of God is tangible. Or touch people with the love of God. Let us know the width, the length, the depth, and the highest of the love of Christ is that surpasses knowledge. That we may be filled with the fullness of you. Grant that. Now, Father, we just look to you for healings. I ask you to touch bodies. We make these adjustments. We forgive others. We forgive ourselves. And, and I, I need, and you may say, I need a healing in my body. Okay, Lord, minister to that need. Minister healing to these individuals that need that for their bodies. That they may carry out your will and your purpose. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I don't have any further leading, really. Now, before I go, i got to do this. Pastor Scott, thank you for having me back. It's just a real pleasure. Enjoying my time with, with you all. Enjoying my time. It's so good to see Pam here. She's so wonderful. She's maintaining her joy and just enjoying life and just all the thing. And so, so wonderful to see you. So here, I want you to put your hands out like this. Put them around you like that. Go like this. And that's me loving on you. All right. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Why don't you stand up real quick for a second? Shake it out. Shake it loose. We'll be out of here in a minute. Thank you for coming. Thanks for sharing what you shared. Thanks for being led by the Lord and being obedient. That's, uh, I'm sure that's not always the easiest word to bring because it's not something that people laugh and get all excited and joyful. It's, 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 it's kind of a hard word to hear, but it's a necessary one to hear. And uh, I like, like we said from the beginning of this, uh, from the first introduction this morning, it's a teaching that will set you free, but it's not going to set you free by applying it to somebody else. You've got to apply it to yourself. Amen. All right, be seated for a minute. We're going to go ahead and receive an offering for Brother David, as I told you we would. If you need an envelope, if you brought cash, you'd like an envelope, make sure you get tax credit for that. Raise your hand. The ushers will get you one. Checks get made out to Living Word Family Church. We will count those and write him one check for the full amount. I promise he gets all of it. But make it out to Living Word Family Church or simply LWFC. A laborer is worthy of his hire. And those who have sown spiritual things into our lives, we are to honor with our uh, material things. Amen? That's money. So don't throw a, I don't know, a feature in your pocket. You found an old chess piece. Oh, this is valuable to me. I'll throw that in there. Now, write a check or put some cash in there. It's a lot easier to give an accounting that way. Praise the Lord. Let's be a blessing. I know you guys don't need coaching in that. I want to uh, I'll reiterate briefly that what we do tonight and added to what we received this morning enables him uh, more freedom uh, to go wherever God opens doors uh, but yeah, it's also just my heart whenever we've been blessed like that just to say hey here you blessed us you be blessed amen enjoy this so praise the Lord are you ready to give tonight Heavenly Father thank you thank you for the word that has been sown into our lives tonight we declare that we're going to receive that seed and it's going to uh, germinate in the good soil of our hearts and it will bloom it will grow and it will bear fruit in our lives that will cause us to be blessed and will make us a blessing to the world around us and ultimately cause us to walk so in the light that others are drawn into that life-changing life giving light of Christ thank you now for the opportunity to give into this work to be a blessing to brother David as he's been a blessing to us and we confess with your word 
that as we give, it will be given back to us, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you as you give.